Hello, my name is Jason Craig, and my assessment acronym is NCLB, which, as we all know, stands for No Child Left Behind. I'm going to start with some brief points uh, regarding the legislation that are of some importance. First of all, No Child Left Behind was proposed by George Bush in January of 2001. He signed it into law January of 2002. It reauthorized the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965. It's organized into 10 separate titles that outline each aspect of No Child Left Behind and it uh, implements statewide standardized testing. Now, No Child Left Behind uh, affects ed educators and administrators at every level. Standards must be set, tests must be created and administered, and content must be taught. Every year, teachers and administrators must improve standardized test scores from the previous year's test scores. No Child Left Behind focuses academics in three areas, reading, writing, and mathematics. Recently, science is being pushed into the curriculum at lower grade levels in order to ensure students don't lose interest in those subjects. These focuses are geared towards students being job prepared right out of high school. The act requires schools to improve their performance annually. They must use scientifically based research practices in the classroom, have parental involvement programs, and they must provide professional development activities for the students. Now here's some brief history about No Child Left Behind. First of all, it's a reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Act of 1965. Now a reauthorization is when Congress prescribes changes, additions, and deletions to a, uh, some legislation that's been passed into law. Now it was brought into existence by Lyndon Johnson through his War on Poverty. It funds primary and secondary education by establishing equal access to education establishing high standards and accountability, and to reduce achievement gaps between low income and middle income. So now let's talk about the standardized testing that is required of each state. First of all, the standardized test must be given yearly to all students. Standardized testing is when all students take the same test under the same conditions and the tests are graded the same way. Schools funding is based on how the students performed on the test as compared to the previous year's scores. In the case of No Child Left Behind standardized testing policy, each state can create their own tests based on the standards the state gets to decide upon. Because of the differences in testing and the actual standards which the tests are based upon, the results may not provide much comparison across the nation. Now let's discuss the thing that holds the schools accountable year after year, the AYP or Adequate Yearly Progress. Now, penalties are assessed for schools that repeatedly perform poorly for consecutive years. The penalties increase with each consecutive year the school performs poorly. Penalties range from being publicly labeled as in need of improvement, possible replacement of curriculum or the entire staff. They could potentially close the school or change the school to a charter school, maybe even have it run by a private company. Now, as I mentioned before, No Child Left Behind is broken up into 10 separate titles. Now, I'll go over them briefly, uh, titles one and two, but the rest of them you can read on your own when you have time. But title one and two, they, they have some importance. Now, with title one, No Child Left Behind looks to improve academic achievement of the disadvantage as it relates to child poverty. Now, it dictates that added funding must be provided for schools with 35% or more low-income students, also, migrant students and youth from intervention programs who are neglected or at risk of abuse. Currently, 50% of all public schools receive Title I funding. Now, Title II requires that every classroom be taught by a high-quality teacher. There's some controversy over this, especially with the definition of high-quality, but No Child Left Behind defines high-quality as a teacher who has a bachelor's degree, has state certification or licensure, and can prove they know each subject that they teach. And that's done through testing such as the CSET, the CBEST, and the RECA. Now these standards aren't uh, uniform across the nation, but No Child Left Behind has a goal of 100% high quality teachers in every classroom. Now I won't go over the other titles, but they are listed in the PowerPoint and you can peruse them at your leisure. But now I'll go ahead and skip down and talk about a few positives and negatives. Now, some positives of No Child Left Behind include increases in academic performance for students with disabilities, which is fantastic. Test scores overall increased for all students. And 98% of elementary and 96% of high school teachers met high quality standards by 2006. Some negatives, 
teaching to the test and neglecting other learning rich experiences. Students with disabilities are given standardized tests rather than focusing on their needs and gaps between low income and migrant students still remain. But we are working towards the goal of everyone being educated and being able to read and compete with the world on a national international level. Uh, that's what No Child Left Behind is all about. And I hope that you like my presentation. Now down below at the very end, there's some reference points regarding uh, No Child Left Behind and I'll allow you to take some time when you have it to read over those. Thank you so much.